Good morning, Uptown Church. Uh, so good to be with you this morning. Uh, we'd like to open up with um, a scripture this morning, and Cecilia would like to read it. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can follow along. We're going to be in Psalms 23. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We just wanted to open up with Psalms 23 today, just a reminder to us that God is truly with us always. He's with us in the shadows, and he's with us um, in the times where we feel lost and lonely, but he's also with us in the joy and in the good times. And there's such a beautiful ending of that, that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that is our great hope as a church and as people who follow the Lord, that one day we will be with him and um, everything will pass away. And there's just so much hope and joy in that. So um, today, if we could just center our hearts on Jesus this morning and um, get our focus on to God. And as we worship him and we spend this next hour, let's keep our, our mind on him. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. We thank you, God, that you are with us. God, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, um, for you are always with us. And God, we just thank you for your word that is, that is the same, Lord, that we can read it, and it's in your the same yesterday, today, and forever, the consistency of who you are, God, in the midst of many days that feel chaotic, and inconsistent God we can find our hope we can find our trust in you we offer this service to you and we thank you God in Jesus name we pray amen good morning everybody <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well this morning. Um, I want to encourage your participation, not in the chat box, but in your homes. Um, it's so easy, um, I know from experience, it's so easy to just kind of sit on the couch and observe, <laughs> but we serve a God this morning who is so worthy of our praise, and uh, let's just give it to him this morning, right? Thank you. From beginning to the end, all my life is in your hand. This whole world may hold me down. But it can never drown you out Cause I'm not merely flesh and bone But I was made for something more You are God, you're the great I am Breath of life I breathe you in Even in the fire I'm alive in you You are strong in my brokenness Sovereign over every sin, even in the fire, I'm alive, I'm alive in you. I'm alive in you, Lord. And through the dark, I hear your voice. Rising up, I will rejoice. For I was lost, but now I'm found. Cause even death can't hold you down. Cause you are God, you're the great I am. Breath of life, I breathe you. Even in the fire, I'm alive in you. You are strong in my brokenness. Sovereign over every step, even in the fire. 
I'm alive, I'm alive You are God, you're the great I Death of life I breathe you Even in the fire I'm alive in you You are strong in my brokenness Sovereign over every step Even in the fire I'm alive, I'm alive in you Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive in you. It's no longer I who live. It's no longer I who live. But Christ who lives within me. Christ who lives within me. From beginning to the end, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Sing it again, it's no longer. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Christ who lives within me. From beginning to the end, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You are God, you're the great I am. Breath of life, I breathe you. Even in the fire, I'm alive in you. You are strong in my brokenness. Sovereign over every step. Even in the fire, I'm alive. Yes, I'm alive. You are God. You are God. You're the great I am. Breath of life, I breathe you. Even in the fire, I'm alive in you. You are strong in my broken, sovereign over every step. Even in the fire, I'm alive. I'm alive in you. Jesus, we rely on you. Your good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am, I've heard. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they, they think you're like. But I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I. I'm never alone, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers. Far and wide, but I know that we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, you are perfect in all of your ways. 
You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Yes, you are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, it's love so undeniable. I, I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable. I, I can hardly think as you call Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love, love, love. As you call, as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love, 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 your good, good father. And I'm loved by you, it's who I am. Your good, good father, it's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, your good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. We sing that by faith. I'm loved by you. I will sing that by faith. Despite any feelings. You're a good, good father and you love us. You love us perfectly. You're a good, good father. Let's sing you perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. So perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, Lord, we need you. You are perfect in all of your ways. So perfect in all of our ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. You're so good. You are so good. is the air I breathe this is the air I breathe your holy presence living in me this is my daily bread This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I 
I'm desperate for you And I I'm lost without you This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living my daily bread. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. I'm desperate for you And I, I I'm lost without you I'm lost without you And I, I I'm desperate for you And I, I, I'm lost without you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm hopeless without you. Lost without you. Sing one more time. This is the air. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence, living. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very words spoken to me, and I. Desperate for you, and I, I, I'm lost without you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence this morning. You are the air that we are breathing, Lord. Lord, I just thank you this morning for how you hold us. Lord, even when we're even when we're foolish, Lord. Even when we're not faithful to you, Lord, you are never changing, Lord. You're perfectly faithful, Lord. desperate for you, Lord. We're lost without you. We have no hope without you, Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness and your grace this morning to us. We thank you, Lord, that you love us and that's who you are, Lord. We give you the glory.
Good morning, Uptown Church. This is Sarah. Um, I was asked to pray for us today, and I'm feeling a little lost for words these days. And sometimes it's helpful for me to pray old familiar prayers. So if you're willing, um, please pray the long version of the serenity prayer with me this morning. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, for leading us in that prayer today. And thank you, David, for leading us in worship this morning. It's great to have every single one of you here with us, part of our Uptown Church service online. Uh, would you do me a favor? If you have the opportunity to start a watch party, uh, to invite more of your friends to uh, gather in with us, or maybe you can share uh, this church service on your Facebook page just to let people know that you are in church and you would like for them to join you. Uh, maybe somebody will tune in today who needs to hear the word uh, that God is going to share with us today. So uh, maybe God wants to use you to bring somebody in. If this is your first time with us, or if you're new to Uptown Church, we want to warmly welcome you, uh, and we want to say thank you for being a part of this service. Uh, there's just one small thing that we would love for you to do. Uh, uh, we don't want to use any of your information uh, in a bad way. We hold your information very closely and dear. Your privacy is secure with us. We just want to get your name and email address so that we can keep you in contact, keep in contact with you and let you know what's happening here at Uptown Church. So you'll see on the screen uptowncov.org slash connect. If you would just go to that link, it'll also be in the uh, comment section of Facebook and take two seconds and just input your name and email address. Uh, that's a way for me to contact you personally and then for us to let you know what's going on uh, here at Uptown Church. Other than that, we will use your information for no other purpose and your privacy uh, is secure with us. Uh, if you would also welcome one another, say hi to each other, greet each other, throw some heart emojis at each other, uh, just do whatever you can do to encourage each other through this platform that we have, uh, just letting people know that you care about them, you see them, you notice them, you recognize them, uh, whatever you might do to make somebody's day, feel free to go ahead and do that. Uh, and while you're doing that, also pay attention to the screen because Deanna is here to share one announcement with us today. Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Deanna and I would like to invite all of you to attend one of our Uptown Church neighboring events. We have lots of different fun and interesting activities and events happening at all different times right now, hosted by lots of different people in the church. And in fact, we have two coming up today. Today from noon to one o'clock, the children are going to be doing a mini pumpkin decorating event on Zoom. And that's going to be hosted by Brina, our children's ministry coordinator. And then from four to six o'clock, Elizabeth and Anna are going to be hosting a virtual pumpkin carving event. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like a blast to me. That's going to be from four to six o'clock on Zoom. And if you want to find more information about how to attend these two events today, as well as all our events that we have coming up, you can find the information on our Neighboring Events Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash group backslash Neighboring Events. I also want to encourage and invite everyone to think about what Neighboring Event you're going to host. I know I have a lot of different ideas that I've been thinking about the last few weeks, but I haven't decided. So I think this week my goal and yours should be too, to choose what Neighboring Event you want to do. Once you've decided, all you have to do is write a brief description and email that to Sarah Giovi. Her email is going to be in the comment box, or you can also message her on Facebook. We want to see our 
Facebook event, neighboring event page fill up with all kinds of different activities over the next couple of months. It's going to start getting colder out and it's already getting a little dreary sometimes. And so it would be, it's going to be really fun and nice to just have a lot of different activities to do together. And I really want to encourage everyone to think about who you can invite to one of our neighboring events someone inside the church and also people outside the church, we really want to encourage you to use this as a chance to reach out to people around us. Thank you. Thanks, Deanna. And I want to echo that uh, to attend as many neighboring events as you possibly can. Invite as many of your friends to attend as well. And also think about hosting one so that you might uh, provide a place of ministry in our church to where you can serve uh, and encourage others through hosting a fun event of your own. On the screen, you are gonna see a QR code. Uh, this is a new thing that we've been doing here at Uptown Church, and this is a way for you to stay in uh, constant communication and, and in, in the know, in the real time of what's happening here at Uptown Church. All you have to do is take out your phone, turn your camera app on as if you're about to take a picture and hold it up to that QR code and it will automatically give you the link to take you to all the different announcements. There are so much, there is so much that's happening here at Uptown Church over the next few weeks and months and this is a way for you to get all of the information that you need. So please do that either today, sometime this week um, and also pay attention to the church email. Uh, we've been asking you to send in your, your pictures and your videos so that we can see you and hear from you during this time of social distancing. And as this uh, pandemic continues to drag on and we're seeing cases rise here in the Chicago area again, there's uh, some more curfews that have been implemented by our mayor. It's even more important for us to be sharing these things as this continues to happen. So we wanna see you and we wanna hear from you. Uh, right now on the screen, you'll see that we have a picture from uh, the uh, Luz and the Camerons getting together uh, for a walk. There is somebody behind Brittany with their hand in the air trying to wave hi, but we don't even see their face in that picture. I'm wondering who that person is. It looks like there's an arm coming out of Brittany's head. That's just what it looks like in that picture. Uh, and then if we go to the next picture, this is our outreach and events team. Yesterday, they went out at 10 o'clock in the morning and they did a prayer walk through Uptown and they handed out stories of hope together. Uh, so say hello to Terry Ballard, Sarah Giovi. Uh, we also have Ethan, Tom Ray, uh, Adam, Paula, Cecilia, and Kara all pictured uh, in there. So if you see people that are coming up in these pictures, make sure you say hi to them, send a shout out to them. It's always good to see these wonderful faces. And then uh, secondly, we do have a video greeting from Ethan, uh, and he wanted to share a little bit about how God has been used, used him in a specific way uh, circumstance uh, uh, this uh, last month. So take a listen as Ethan shares a little testimony with us. Hey Uptown Church, I hope you're all doing well and I wanted to share a story of how I've seen God working in my life recently. Uh, not too long ago I went to a wedding for my high school friend. He was my only Christian friend in high school and after the years he he fell away from the faith, uh, so uh, yeah, throughout times of reconnecting, I tried to uh, yeah, encourage him back towards following God. Uh, and so when this wedding came up, I saw it as uh, hopefully one more opportunity to uh, reconnect and uh, continue to build our friendship and point him towards Christ. Uh, so I was praying about uh, sensitivity for opportunities that come up and for God to be working there and asking others to pray with me uh, and so the wedding happens uh, the the ceremony runs smoothly and it's a uh, it's a nice wedding um, but I didn't really get to talk much with my friend and and so I wait for the after party the after party happens uh, his mom shows up drunk and he argues with her for a while not or trying to have her not drive home um, and so he's occupied for like two three hours and that was a bummer for me because I'm thinking, man, I, I wish I could be talking with them. Um, and, but uh, within that time, I, I was talking with other people at the party. 
And uh, when I was talking with one guy, just out of nowhere, he starts talking about his uh, spiritual walk. Uh, he had a cross necklace tattoo on him and was talking about uh, conversations that that starts up. Uh, and he starts disclosing about how uh, he's feeling less uh, alive in his spiritual walk. And uh, he stopped going to church, isn't really reading his Bible at all. Uh, is very private and uh, isolated with his faith. Uh, so then that led to a conversation to encourage him to get back involved with uh, church community and um, the the vitality that comes from a healthy spiritual walk. So that was a blessing to, um, to be able to share some words with him. And then after that, then my friend's mom comes back and uh, starts apologizing to everybody about her behavior and um, trying to explain herself. And uh, people are kind of ignoring her, dismissing her and whatnot. But God laid it on my heart to start up a conversation with her. Um, so as uh, people kind of stopped paying attention to her, uh, we, us two started talking. And uh, then she started disclosing uh, different things about uh, pains and struggles that she has in her life. And even uh, she tried to take uh, eight bottles of pills before the wedding uh, so that she, she wouldn't have to show up. Uh, she was intending to kill herself that way. Uh, but by, by God's hand, uh, she was still alive. And um, so almost naturally, you, you'd think she wasn't supposed to be at the wedding anyways. But then God opened up that conversation to lead to talking about the gospel and uh, sources of hope and uh, while we're still in contact and um, talking about reasons for living and uh, the difficulties of believing in God when so many problems exist uh, I think that's definitely an answer prayer to um, how I was wanting to be open and sensitive to opportunities God had uh, for this wedding weekend um, so again this is a testimony to answer prayer um, yeah, if you would be remembering Laura, my friend's mom, um, be praying for her as well, that God continues to open up her heart. Uh, so I hope this encourages you. Continue to be, be faithful and uh, obeying God in, in every moment. See ya. Thank you, Ethan, for sharing that testimony about how God used you in that way. And may God use all of us this week in different ways as we encounter opportunities to share the love of Jesus and to share the hope of Jesus. Uh, just a quick update for you. Uh, we will be meeting again on November 5th as a church, uh, which is a Thursday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. It is the first Thursday in November to do a little bit more of a discussion around the facility pro search process that we are going through. So I just want to uh, encourage us all to be in prayer together as we are in this process of looking for a new facility. Uh, we are going to be sharing some updates as to where we're at in that process and what's going on. So please uh, attend on Zoom the first Thursday in November at 7 o'clock p.m. I do want to take a moment for us to pray together right now as we are in this process. The Lord leads us and guides us. And I also want us to take a moment to pray for the unrest that we're seeing happening in Nigeria uh, and pray for God's hand and his protection on many of those that are um, protesting and uh, advocating for change and violence is breaking out. So can you pray with me? Uh, this morning. Lord, we come to you and we ask you in this moment as the big God of the universe that you are to intervene with your mighty hand uh, with what is happening overseas across the world uh, in Nigeria. And I pray, Lord, for your justice uh, to uh, flow through that country. And we pray for your peace and your protection uh, over the residents uh, that are protesting and that are enduring uh, uh, violence uh, and harm. Lord, I don't know everything that is happening. We only see snippets of what is going on, but Lord, we just ask, Lord, for you to do a work, Lord, in that country, uh, Lord, and we pray, Lord, for uh, uh, your hand and your miracles to be evidence, Lord, uh, there. And Lord, we pray for your hand here at home as we as a church are navigating this process of searching for a new facility. Lord, a place for us to be 
uh, where we can inhabit 24 seven to further the work of ministry. Lord, we feel led that you want to uh, have us move in this direction to have this tool, Lord, to, to do your work uh, and to accomplish your will here. So Lord, we just pray for your hand upon us, guide us, we pray, in your name we pray, amen. And if uh, you are not yet giving to Uptown Church, this is a great time to begin to give, especially as we are entering this process of looking for a facility. We know that our costs are going to be going up, but yet we are living by faith and we are believing for God to take care of us and to meet all of our needs. But God does want to meet our needs through the local body. So you can give through our website or you can give by texting the dollar amount to 84321. Uh, we would love to have you join us as we move in this process of wanting to do further outreach and ministry here in Uptown. This morning we are in week three of our sermon series titled, Now What? Life is full of twists, life is full of turns, there's ups, there's downs, there's highs, there's lows. You know, things rarely seem to go as planned and the unexpected the unplanned for, and the unforeseen always seems to crop up, creep in, and come our way, leading to us asking the question, now what? Something happened that we did not anticipate. Our lives are being altered in some major ways. Now what? You know, the insurance industry is a multi-billion dollar industry that really wants to help us have a little bit of peace of mind within this question of now what? They want to provide a cushion for us where they say they will be there for us when the craziness of life erupts and we feel like that the craziness is going to affect us financially. Take a look at this commercial from Farmers Insurance. They do a whole truckload of these commercials, basically telling you to buy their insurance because you never know what could happen in life. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two, like how nice it is to save on your auto policy. But it's even nicer knowing that if this happens, or this happens, or this, or this, or even this, We've seen and covered it. So switch to Farmers and you could save an average of $395. Get a quote today. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. You see, these types of commercials are basically telling us that when the now what moments happen in life, you at least have some financial security because you never know what life might bring your way. We are in this sermon series called Now What? because we do find ourselves asking this question quite often, don't we? Life takes us on a wild ride. So much happens that is out of our control, leaving us disoriented, confused, and feeling lost at times. And while we can do our best to make good choices, we can do our best to live well and avoid self-destruction, and we can prepare the best that we possibly can, and I want to encourage us and tell us that we should do this. We should do the best that it, that is in our power to prevent some of the craziness that life could bring our way. And I want to encourage us and implore us to make proactively wise decisions to avoid as, pain, as many painful circumstances as possible. Like for instance, I have found out in life that if I brush and floss my teeth regularly, that I can avoid cavities for the most part. I've also discovered that if I take a shower regularly, that I will see that back acne disappear. I've also realized that if I would choose to clip my toenails in the privacy of my own home and not on the CTA, I would avoid getting punched in the face. So I want to encourage us to avoid as much of the craziness of life as possible with our own proactive energies. But in addition to developing the tools and the discipline to live proactively, 
We also need to develop a skill set where we learn how to react when the curveballs of life come our way, when things are totally out of our control, despite our best efforts. We must be able to answer this question of now what when the unanticipated happens, when the thing happens in our lives that's really uncontrollable uh, and we really can't prepare for. You see, many of us respond poorly when we find ourselves in the reactive mode and not the proactive mode because we feel let down by the proactive mode, don't we? All of the preventative measures that we have taken in life for it to go well, for us to be successful, to put the proper guardrails there, the right boundaries, we've made tons of sacrifices, we've lived a disciplined life, and then all of a sudden the now what moment appears and we, get, uh, we feel let down, we fall into despair, anger, bitterness, blame, or indifference. For instance, I remember when the 2008 housing crash happened and I was angry and I was angry because Kara and I had done what we were supposed to do, what the people told us to do. We saved money. We were frugal for so many years, putting money aside month after month to get a down payment for our house. We were doing it the right way years and years of sacrifice. And we finally were able to put that down payment on that house. Uh, we were able to afford something after so many years of being diligent, being proactive. And within six months of purchasing our home in 2007, the market crashes and our home was worth half of the value of what we had purchased, purchased it for. I had felt let down. I had done everything the right way and still, the unexpected happened. Now what? And then on top of it, the bailouts come, and I remember the bailouts all going to the big banks and the companies and the lenders that created this fiasco in the first place, leaving us with nothing. Taking over a decade for our house just to get back to the value that it once had. You see, we are studying the life of Joseph through this Now What series because Joseph is one of the best examples that we find in Scripture, the person who really teaches us how we should react and respond within the Now What situations. Because Joseph encountered all sorts of crazy and difficult circumstances, but yet Joseph, he responded with faith, courage, integrity, and patience. We have already looked at how to react and how to respond and live when we end up in the pit, when we are thrust into unfamiliar territory. And now we are going to ask ourselves the question, what do I do? How do I live when I am in a compromising situation? Let's look at Genesis chapter 39. We're going to start in verse 6 and we're going to read through verse 12. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants uh, was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Temptation is a part of life. All of us are going to find ourselves in the midst of situations where we are being enticed to make compromises. Our sinful nature wants to be fed and satiated. And like Joseph, we will find ourselves in compromising situations where our flesh is going to pull us one direction and our spirit is going to pull us the other. And now as we begin this discussion over this topic of I'm in a compromising situation, now what? I don't want us to get tripped up or overly weighed down by our previous failures in life. It is easy for the track record of our past sins and mistakes to create a defeatist attitude in us, leading us to despise ourselves, 
no matter how many times, I want us to hear this morning as we enter into this discussion, no matter how many times you and I fail and mess up, there is no reason to lose hope and give up. Just because we have not handled compromising situations and temptation well in the past doesn't mean that God loves you and I any less. We have not lost value in God's eyes, and we don't have to earn anything back because we have made mistakes. That is the whole point of God's grace. God's grace wants our effort, but it doesn't earn us anything, as Dallas Willard wrote. God's grace does cover our sins when we choose to confess and repent. So instead of getting tripped up by our past this morning, instead of being able to hear what God wants to say to us right now and to turn that new leaf so that our future behavior can change and become better, let's let's not let the past weigh us down too much. Let's look to the future. Let's look with hope. Because trust me, there are going to be more compromising situations, more temptations. Sin is going to come knocking on our door again today, tomorrow, the next week. And we can do better. Using Joseph as our guide, we can learn how to live better and respond better when life confronts us with the conditions that tempt us towards wrongdoing. This morning, we want to learn how we can better refuse like Joseph did when sin pops up, tugging on us to make ungodly compromises. So I'm going to offer us three A's this morning. The triple A's. These are the batteries that are going to give us power. This is the roadside assistance for life. This is us spending time in the minor leagues to prepare for the majors. I was trying to come up with as many triple A's as I could come up with here. Um, The first A that we learn from Joseph in this passage is the first thing that he does is he assesses the situation. He assesses. He identifies the path to take that honors God and pleases others. This is what he does. So when we find ourselves tempted in a compromising situation like Joseph found himself with Potiphar's wife, the the, the truth is, is our defeat is imminent. We are going to lose, we are going to make poor choices when we do not assess the situation properly. When we lose sight of others, and when we stop thinking about them and stop thinking about God, the battle's over. So what we tend to do when we find ourselves in these moments of temptation is we assess things based on what is best for us in the moment. We're assessing our own desires, our own feelings, and our own cravings. But Joseph was not doing that in this passage. Joseph assessed the situation in the moment of temptation, and he was thinking about how it would affect Potiphar and how it would affect God. Look at verse 8. When he is tempted by Potiphar's wife, it says that he refuses by saying to her that his master, Potiphar, has entrusted everything into his care and he does not want to disrespect his master. And then he goes on to say, how could I do such a wicked thing against God? So unlike Joseph, as I said, we tend to find ourselves in compromising situations, assessing our desires, our cravings, focused on what we want in the moment. And we lose sight of how our behavior might impact others or uh, be seen before God. It's the idea that we're walking down the street and our neighbor has a, a pie baking that has been baked and now it's cooling in the windowsill, the very generalized, stereotypical uh, 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 illustration. And we want that pie. We're hungry. We, that pie smells so good. It, we just know that it's going to taste so good. So we go and we take that pie because of what we want and we're hungry and we want to eat that. Not thinking about the fact that the neighbor is making it for their friends, their family, A big example is David when he desired Bathsheba when he was on the rooftop uh, uh, watching her bathe and he was willing for his her husband to be killed so that he could have her because he was not thinking about anything else except what he desired sin is going to tap us on the shoulder and it is going to urge us to give into desires 
cravings and wants that we have. But we need to be able to step back like Joseph and not focus on our desires, on our cravings, and we need to assess if the behavior that we are going to engage in will be a benefit to others and if it will honor God. Joseph refused to act inappropriately because he knew it would betray Potiphar and he knew God would not be pleased. So, how can we do a better job of thinking through these things so that we are not so focused on ourselves in the moment? Well, I cannot stress how important it is for us to cultivate a deep, strong intimacy with God through prayer, worship, and reading his word. These things help us build up our resistance to temptation. This is one of our most effective weapons that we have in combating the compromising situations that we find ourselves in. If we want the focus and the attention to get off of our desires, our cravings, our lusts, we need to be on a daily basis thinking about God's desires, what God wants. We need to be worshiping him. We need to be spending time in prayer with him and we need to be in his word. The psalmist writes, I have hidden your word, God, in my heart. God, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The psalmist connects having God's word a part of their life as a combativeness to sin. When Jesus was confronted with temptation in the wilderness by Satan, he used scripture, his knowledge of scripture, to combat that temptation. I do not know how to stress enough the fact that we need to up our Bible literacy. We need to be soaking in God's Word. We need to know it. We need to memorize it. We need to feed on it. The reality is, is that biblical literacy within the church today is so low and we just depend upon the leaders and the pastors to know God's word and then we just want to uh, hear it and we're not doing the work on our end to really be immersed in scripture. If we are reading scripture, we tend to use it for information, to prove a point, to prove what we want. Uh, uh, to be said to say that we're right on one issue or another issue and so our scripture reading tends to be about the need for information and not the need for self-transformation we need to know God's Word we also need to pray you know Jesus tells his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane he says pray wake up and pray why so that you do not fall into temptation our prayer life is directly connected to how we are going to handle and assess our compromising situations. Within the Lord's Prayer, it says, lead us not into temptation. We are to pray these things. We are also to worship because worship cultivates a love. It cultivates a passion, an emotional connection with God that empowers us to resist the things that do not honor Him. We will be less prone to sin against God the more we develop a tangible, a passionate, emotional connection with him. Prayer, worship, and scripture, these are the things that unleash the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the Holy Spirit is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a partner who will help us to resist temptation. If you and I are having a hard time navigating the compromising situations because we are so focused on ourselves and we lose sight of others and we lose sight of God. I encourage you, put in the work, do the things, develop the disciplines so that when temptation comes your way, when temptation comes my way, it's not just about me anymore. It's not just about what I want, but I begin to also think about others, assessing how my behavior will impact them and if it will honor God. John Piper said, sin gets its power by persuading me to believe I will be more happy if I follow it. The power of all temptation is the prospect that it will make me happier. We have to lose the focus on self if we are going to navigate these compromising situations. Step two, not only did Joseph 
assess the situation well. He chose to act well. And he chose the right path. And he didn't just choose the right path. He chose it consistently and he chose it quickly. Verse 10, 11, and 12 said that as Potiphar's wife spoke to Joseph day after day after day. He had to resist the temptation over and over and over. He needed to be consistent in his actions. Just because you and I were successful yesterday in saying no to the temptation that came our way doesn't mean we're going to be successful today. Temptation, it's like coronavirus. It's not taking a day off. It's not stopping. It's not relenting. It's just there and it wants to infect us every single day and it's just constant. Joseph found himself facing the same compromising situation over and over again day after day. This means that we might get worn down. We might get caught on an off day at a time when we are most vulnerable. We need to develop consistency. I don't know if you've heard the HALT acronym, H-A-L-T. What do I do when I'm hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? This is what, you know, these are the four times in life when we are most prone to giving into the compromising situation. When we're hungry, when we're angry, when we're lonely, and when we're tired. You see, the consistency that we need cannot be manufactured with just our human strength. We are going to fail if we think that we could be consistent on our own. We need the power of the Holy Spirit as part of the equation. Galatians 5.16, Paul writes, Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Paul does not write, Develop your own strength and discipline and you will not uh, uh, gratify the desires of the flesh. He says to walk by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of our main keys to developing the consistency that we need to handle the repetitive compromising situations that come our way. So we can assess properly. We can know that this is not good behavior because it will hurt others and it will dishonor God. But when that temptation comes at us day after day after day, wearing us down, we need the power of the Holy Spirit so we can be consistent in our refusal of giving in. Margaret Thatcher once said, you may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. You may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. Joseph's actions weren't just consistent, they were quick. In our chapter, it says that once he found out that uh, Potiphar's wife was behaving this way, he tried to avoid her. He didn't want to be around her in the same room. So he was just just removing himself, distancing himself. And then whenever he does find himself in the room and she grabs him by the cloak, what does he do? He bolts out of there. I mean, th this guy is just quick. And, and, and what we think is that by him removing his cloak meant he ran naked out of the room. The problem for us is that we don't behave like Joseph a lot of times. We don't really have the quickness of Joseph. We get ourselves into trouble because instead of distancing ourselves the way he was distancing himself from Potiphar's wife and the way that he bolted from the room whenever he needed to get out of the room, we tend to be more tolerant of the compromising situation. We like to flirt with it a little bit more, dance around it, maybe get as close to it as we possibly can, feeling bold and powerful that, yeah, we can sort of be around this, maybe be in the vicinity of this, and it's not going to impact us or pollute us. James chapter 1 verse 14 says, But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed by it. Then, after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So you can see this process that James is laying out for us. And for us, it's about we just let it entice us. We sort of stay around it. We sort of stay in that process a little bit and just wanting to jump off of the ride whenever we think we're just getting a little bit too close. We entertain our desires in smaller chunks, feeling safe. Meanwhile, it's giving birth to a sinful behavior in us that we don't even know is taking place. And then we get defeated whenever it happens and 
it's actually our own fault because we never developed the quickness to run from, remove ourselves, and distance ourselves early on in the process. The same goes play with fire and you're gonna get burned. Instead of flirting with a compromising situation, we should be fleeing from it. An unknown source once said, when you flee your temptation, be sure you don't leave your forwarding address. Some of us find ourselves in bondage to sin this morning. Some of us are struggling with immense addictions that have strong power over us. Some of us are wrapped in chains that have bound us so tightly, we don't know what to do. We feel completely powerless. But we also need to admit that maybe we lacked quickness. Maybe we tolerated some things a little bit too long in our lives that we should have dealt with early on when it was a small bud and hasn't grown into a big vine that's wrapped itself around us. There's a quick little story of a father who said, son, I don't want you to go swimming in the canal. And the son said, okay, dad. But he came home later that evening carrying his wet bathing suit. And the dad said, well, where have you been, son? And the son said, well, I was swimming in the canal. And the dad said, well, didn't I tell you not to go swimming there? And the boy said, uh, yes, sir, you did tell me. And the father said, well, then why'd you do it? And he said, well, dad, I had my bathing suit with me and I was walking by the canal and I couldn't resist the temptation. And the dad said, well, why'd you take your bathing suit with you? And the boy said, well, so I'd be prepared to swim in case I was tempted. <laughs> and that's sort of how we get with sin sometimes. We sort of anticipate and know, and we get too close, and we're a little bit too prepared to engage uh, with and be enticed by the desires that come our way. If you find yourself in bondage this morning, if you find yourself wrapped with chains, there is hope because God can break those chains. God can release us from the sin that has habitually wrapped itself into our lives. And when God frees us, it is on us to continue to be quick to be distant and to run from it. Once again, we cannot do this on our own power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Finally, not only did Joseph assess the situation well, and not only did he act well by being consistent and quick with his um, actions, final, he accepted things well. And what I mean by this is he prepared for the consequences of resisting the temptation. I wish I could tell you this morning that Joseph's story had a fairy tale ending. I wish I could tell you that because Joseph assessed things well and he acted accordingly with consistency and quickness, that voila, God's blessing and favor just rained down upon him. Potiphar saw through the deception of his wife, the lies of his wife, and Potiphar was so moved by Joseph's loyalty and Joseph's discipline that he rewarded him with riches and he sent him home to his family and gave him his freedom. Instead, Joseph ended up in prison for acting rightly and resisting temptation. Verse 19, if we skip ahead in our story here, when Potiphar heard the story of his wife saying, this is how your slave treated me, lying to Potiphar to say that Joseph tried to advance upon her, Potiphar burned with anger. And it says that Joseph's master took him and put him in prison. Are you and I willing, ready, and able to accept the price that we sometimes have to pay for doing the right thing. Next Sunday, we're gonna dig down deeper into Joseph's life because he finds himself in this unfair situation. We're gonna ask the question, I'm in an unfair situation, now what? And here we find that Joseph had to be willing to accept the final A here. He had to be ready to endure the pain of making the right call, living with the unjust, unfair blowback that accompanied his virtue. We should not be surprised by this. Jesus is our ultimate example of what happened for living a perfect life. 
Jesus resisted temptation and he navigated successfully out of every compromising situation that came his way. And what ends up happening to him? He ends up getting crucified on the cross. Oftentimes, giving into temptation is the path of least resistance. Let me say that again. Oftentimes, giving into temptation is the path of least resistance. Avoiding sin, acting rightly, can lead to so much pain and trouble in our lives. Mark Laberton, who's the president of Fuller Seminary, posted on social media just recently, and he said that within the last week, he had heard from five faithful and outstanding pastors who were on the verge of quitting or being fired from their churches. They all served in different parts of the country and were part of different denominations. And what held them all together were the fact that they were white and they served predominantly white congregations. And what else held them in common was their daring call to their congregations to hear and follow Jesus into the issues of reordering power, including race. These pastors were doing the right thing and they were losing their jobs over it. If you and I think that resisting temptation will earn us a proper and just reward right now in this life, on this earth, we will become bitter, disheartened, and turn our back on God. And maybe that's your story this morning. Maybe you feel like you have acted justly. Maybe you feel like you have lived virtuously and life has not been fair to you and the consequences of your righteous behavior has led you into a world of trouble causing you to turn your back on God. The thing is, is that this life doesn't promise us our just reward, but God promises us our just reward in heaven. We do have an ultimate reward, but right now, just because we choose the right path, doesn't mean we are going to receive instantaneous affirmation or satisfaction. You see, it is sin that offers us temporary, quick pleasure that is fleeting. God offers us lasting, eternal peace, joy, and delight. So we need to be ready like Joseph, ready to accept, accept the injustice of it all. Be prepared for resistance, alienation, and pain. We cannot let it deter us from doing what is right. Don't give in to this compromising situation you face just because it's easier and the road feels wider. I encourage you to follow Jesus and hold on. Sin, sin is deceitful. Satan comes at us with compromising situations that seem pleasurable, delightful, and desirable. He takes something that is deadly. He takes something that is destructive. He takes something that is evil and he wraps it up in these enticing ways and he tries to convince us that it will all bring fulfillment and joy to our life. The question that I have for us this morning is, are you running on the hamster wheel of self-gratification? And how is that working for you? How long are you going to keep chasing and pursuing these satisfactions and these fulfillments in temporary things? Yes, they thrill you for an instant, but ultimately they leave you hollow, empty, and unsatisfied, needing to pursue the next one. How long are you going to continue assessing the situations you face based upon your desires? what is going to feed your cravings? How long are you going to continue to act on these feelings and try to satiate these emotions? And how often are you going to just accept and choose the path of least resistance? How's it working out for you? Maybe it's time for a different approach. Maybe it's time to step back and say, now what? because what I've been doing hasn't been really working too well. Yes, resisting and refusing to give into temptation isn't easy and it doesn't always yield the positive instantaneous results we want, but it does lead to more fulfillment and joy over the entirety of our life. Hear me this morning. 
the positive instantaneous results won't be there probably. But when you look back over 10, 15, 20 years, you will notice that there is greater fulfillment, greater joy, and greater purpose in life. We as Christians, we resist and we refuse temptation. We don't do it just to be ethical and to be virtuous. We do it because we love God. And we will not make it if all we want to do is to be virtuous and to be ethical. It's not enough motivation. There's not enough there. And the power of the Spirit is in that. The power of the Holy Spirit is in it when we refuse temptation out of love for God. We want to preserve and deepen intimacy with Jesus. We don't want things in our life polluting us that keeps us from maintaining that closeness with him. The thing is, is that Joseph, yes, he would have had the company and the companionship of Potiphar's wife in that bed. But how long would that, that have lasted? Verse 21 tells us that even though Joseph found himself in prison, he wasn't alone. God was with him. That's what it says. I don't know about you, but I would rather have the companionship of God in prison than the companionship of a human in a bed. I would rather have the companionship of God in prison than the companionship of a human in a bed. Life is hard, but life can be fulfilling because God satisfies, God sustains, and God is faithful. So even in the midst of prison, if God is with us, life can be fulfilling. The pleasures of this world, they are the things that are fleeting, shallow, empty, and deceptive. I don't care what your track record looks like in the past. I don't care how many times you have failed just today or this weekend alone. And you know what? God doesn't care either. It doesn't phase him. Our mistakes, our faults, and our flaws, they don't make God run away from us. In fact, it's us running away from God. Forgiveness, grace, and mercy are waiting for us from God. And he is willing to, open, to welcome us with open arms. Today is a new day. We can begin to live differently. Like Joseph, learning from him, we can begin to assess the situation rightly, begin to act honorably, and hold our head high accepting the consequences that come our way. Are you ready to turn over a new leaf this morning? Are you ready to begin handling temptation differently? Sin is going to knock, but you and I can refuse to give in. With the power and help of the Holy Spirit, as we root ourselves in Scripture, worship fervently, and pray with intercession, we can navigate the deceptive, tricky waters, coming out victorious on the other side of our compromising situation. The question is, now what? The choice is ours. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we cannot escape temptation. We cannot escape sin enticing us. We have a sinful nature that does desire and crave things that do not honor you and hurt others. Lord, I pray from the life of Joseph that we would begin to assess things properly. We would begin to act honorably with consistency and quickness. And we would be willing to accept the difficulties that come our way for doing the right thing. Lord, I pray for anyone who is watching and participating in this service this morning who is living in a life 
of sin. Not even resisting, not even refusing. I pray that you would prompt them with the loving conviction of the Holy Spirit for them to change their ways, for them to surrender to you and to begin to live for you, to get off the hamster wheel of self-gratification and to live for your gratification, Lord, to please you. And for those of us that feel in bondage to specific areas of sin, Lord, where we have made bad assessments, bad actions, and we have taken the easy road too often in the past, and we need freedom this morning. Lord, I pray you would bring that freedom, that you would bring miraculous transformation, and that you would break the chains off of our lives, Lord, where we feel in bondage to sin, where we feel like we are habitually drawn to certain actions, behaviors, things, thoughts, deeds. Do that work this morning and let us, Lord, turn over that new leaf within that freedom to do and live like Joseph did. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. As I said in this sermon, worship is one of our weapons that empowers us to overcome sin and to act rightly when we face the compromising situation. So would you join me and would you worship with David as he leads us? Would you sing to the Lord and use your worship as a weapon to help answer this question, now what? Lord, I come and I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you, we sing run your grace is more what grace is found is where you are yeah you are lord i'm free and the holiness is christ in me lord i need you lord i need
So teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand, I fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay And Lord, I need you Oh, I need you and Every hour I need you You're my one defense My righteousness Oh God Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, and every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh, God, how I need you, my one defense, my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Hi, Uptown Church. This is Anna. And Alex. Please join us in saying the benediction. Lord, Lord, give give me opportunities opportunities this week to help disrupt suffering and and mend what is broken with the hope of Jesus. Where there is violence, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is poverty, help me to offer the resources I have. Where there is addiction, may I pray for the power of your freedom. Where there is loneliness, use me to foster community. Where there is an overabundance of convenience, Teach Teach me me to to sacrifice. sacrifice. In In Jesus' Jesus name, name, amen. Ahora en español. Señor, dame la oportunidad esta semana de interrumpir el sufrimiento y remendar lo que está quebrantado con la esperanza de Jesús. Donde haya violencia, hazme un instrumento de tu paz. Donde haya pobreza, Ayúdame a ofrecer de los recursos que tengo. Donde haya adicción, que pueda orar por el poder de tu libertad. Donde haya soledad, utilízame para fomentar el compañerismo. Donde haya sobreabundancia de comodidad, enséñame a sacrificar. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Thank you so much for being here today. May God blessly rich you. May God richly bless you this week. And when you find yourself tempted, when you find yourself in that compromising situation, asking the question, "Now what?" May we find strength and wisdom through Joseph on how he behaved and how God brought him through. We'll see you on Thursday for our midweek Bible study. And there are, once again, a multitude of neighboring events that are happening. Uh, The two that are happening uh, today, the kids right after service at noon are doing their uh, pumpkin painting. And then for the adults, a little bit later in the afternoon, there is a um, pumpkin carving with Elizabeth and Anna. So thank you for being here and have a wonderful rest of the weekend.